one's mandatory. You better get out the way, car. What's up, guys? Super excited for today's video because we're going to be installing a crowd favorite modification on Shorty today. Kind of a party trick, kind of a race truck mod, mostly party trick on Chomper. But once we did the long tube headers on here, I knew we had to install one of these as well on Shorty. So I went ahead and picked up a MSD two-step. Should be a fairly easy install, and by the end of this video, we're going to be spitting flames. Now just go ahead, pop your hood, take your negative terminal off. It's going to be a 10 mil. That way we don't accidentally touch something and have a short out. Let's go ahead and remove our engine cover. Just pop it up, work it off. Now we're going to go ahead and take loose our hood ground, 10 mil. Take this ground off as well. And we're going to relocate this guy right down here. Let's throw that 10 mil back on. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our MSD box and mount it onto that stud. There she is, nice and secure, good to go. I just looped the wires back underneath the box. There's gonna be one side that's longer, that's gonna go to your passenger. Shorter side's gonna go right here on the driver. A little safety pin you gotta pull out. Then you can pick this up, wiggle that loose, take our new one, plug it in just like that, put your safety loop back in, and then plug this guy into the factory harness. Pull that safety pin out, lift up, wiggle that loose, and then run your wire down here. Plug in in line to the MSD. and put the little lock pin back through there. So we're gonna be using the blue white wire because we're gonna be running this to a switch. If you use the solid blue, I think that's just to a ground so that it runs all the time, but we're gonna be using this uh, plug-in right here, it comes with it. It is a blue wire coming off, so don't get confused with that. We're not using the blue wire that's coming off the MSD box. We're using the blue and white connected to this, which is solid blue. And then we've got to run this into the inside of the truck. Now you run your wire any way you want to to get it inside your truck. The factory grommet is right there. However, I'm always just scared of doing that because I don't want to hit one of the wires and it'd be a whole ordeal. So I just popped a little hole through right there. Got a bunch of silicone on it. Obviously you want to seal that up. If we come in here, I'll show you all how I did it. So um, right up underneath here is going to be this guy. It's got a push pin holding in little tabs. You pop it free, then there's these tabs on each side. You pop those, and then these little wheels right here are in place of that. You just lift it up. Um, but right there is where we went through. There's a perfect little hole through the insulation. It's cut out almost like they intended you to possibly do this, but um, just make sure on your truck it could be different. I don't know. Uh, you don't want to hit anything on the other side, but our factory grommet's right there. That guy's right there. About just died on that drill. Um, so I was able to just look, there's our factory grommet, right there is where that's going to be. Just make sure you don't hit anything important, like I said, if your truck is different. But that's how we're through. Love it, hate it, that's how I did it. We're going to be installing our switch panel right here in this little cubby hole. So we're going to carefully try to remove this dash bezel without removing anything else. I think we can do it if we're careful. Up 
pants out. Got a couple plugs to undo in the flathead. Unplug our cigarette lighters. And then our traction control. And she will be free, please. Ah, oh, freaking finally, my gosh. All right, got it clipped into place. It's not a million percent perfect. It sticks out just a little bit on the bottom. This is a flat piece that was printed and this bezel is a little bit rounded, but overall, looks pretty sick. So these are three prong switches. Top copper one is gonna be ground, middle is gonna be power in, bottom is gonna be power out. So the top ground will just ground to something underneath the dash. I gotta figure out what is the right location for that. And then power in, we're gonna be doing a avifuse to one of these that's gonna supply constant 12 volt power while the truck is running. We'll connect it to the middle one. And then the bottom one is gonna be power out, which we'll be connecting to the wire that we ran through the dash and that way when we flip the switch we'll be getting power to the msd and our two-step will work just got done running all of our wires everything is plugged up to our switch so power in is coming from um, our auxiliary port for the cigarette lighter it is actually uh, number 16 right here auxiliary power to 20 amp got a 10 amp fuse with it and uh, i'm running that to our switch for power and then for signal which is going to be our blue wire that we ran through firewall got that hooked up as well and then our ground which is the top copper wire we've got running through here and is right there on i guess our throttle pedal mount uh, it seemed like a good spot for a ground so i stuck her there i gotta go through here clean all of our wires up get them zip tied out of the way then we'll be ready to go ahead plug our battery back up turn our key and see if everything is working correctly <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot get this thing to spit a freaking flame. I have hit the two-step like 50 times at this point, and I'm honestly feeling kind of bad for Shorty. <laughs> but uh, no flames. I honestly think it is tune-related because if I'm thinking back, when I installed this on Chomper, exact same MSD two-step, I couldn't get it to spit flames. But I didn't really know how, and after figuring out the proper footwork, I can get Chomper to spit a flame and pop anytime, anywhere. But if I'm thinking back, I think that didn't happen until after the cam and it got dyno tuned and before it was tuned by the same company that's tuned this. And so I think something in the tune um, does not allow it to do that backfire. Uh, even though, you know, it's, it's raw fuel, you can smell it, um, but it's just not, it's not backfiring. And so I'm thinking that is the case, unfortunately. Might have to test the theory. Maybe we just go get freaking shorty dyno tuned. I have to do it but i do think that could be the the issue because this truck still revs down super slow just like the factory tune but it's not factory tune i don't know i guess there's certain settings they could adjust and maybe this company doesn't so that sucks man i've been drying that freaking christmas tree out and keeping it in good condition since 
after Christmas when it was supposed to be gone. And I've been holding on to it for this freaking very video because I wanted to pop a flame off on it and catch it on fire. And I know I can do that with Chomper, but maybe it's not the tune. Maybe it's just me not got the feel for it for some reason. Uh, so I'm going to drive the truck for a while and see if I can get it to do some backfires and then readdress the Christmas tree. But yeah, I definitely could go smoke it with Chomper. And I might end up doing that, but... Dude, this thing sounds freaking rowdy. Definitely more rowdy than Chomper just due to this exhaust setup. Maybe our muffler has something to do with it. That shouldn't, honestly, because we got mufflers on Chomper and it still spits flames. Um, but yeah, dude, this thing sounds freaking rowdy. Started out at 3,500 RPM, which it sounded much higher than that. <laughs> um, and then I checked Chomper. Chomper set at 3,000, so I set it to that. And then I tried lower, 2,500. And... Uh, you know, dramatic change in noise, but no change in the Spitfire. So, yeah. Either way, uh, that's pretty straightforward, easy install of the MSD two-step. Anybody with uh, the old long tube headers, throw this baby on there and spit you some flames. If you got the right tune, apparently. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it sounds freaking sick. Like I said in the beginning, it's kind of just a party trick, but it's obviously intended for launch control, which... Maybe, hopefully, in the future, we will use it for that. But for the time being, it's just cool to, you know, pop off at your friends, spit a little flame at the, the truck meet, whatever. So definitely not an inexpensive mod, though, unfortunately. I will have a link to it in the description. You can get them off of Amazon and uh, get your truck two-stepping. So we have now done it on a GMT 800 and a GMT 900. I don't think they make them for Larry, but I actually should look into that. That'd be kind of cool. It'd probably just immediately blow up Larry. Honestly, I feel bad for just freaking 50 time in a row, two-stepping shorty. I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, hopefully y'all did enjoy the video. Definitely comment down below. Let me know if you got any secret tips to get your GMT 900 to spit a flame. Because with Chomper, it was a lot of getting the right feel for it. Not just floorboarding it and holding it. You got to really just... Whatever. Anyways, yeah, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, ring that bell notification, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hopping in the video real quick because we are finally releasing a couple items available for purchase, starting with this bad boy right here. This is a 4x4 four four inch decal. Go ahead and slap you one on your back glass, your brow, your toolbox, your cooler, your laptop, wherever you feel like. It's going to be the first link in the description. We're hoping to add hats and shirts as well, but starting off, I wanted to do a sticker. Hopefully, y'all enjoy the design. Pick you one up. I appreciate the support. Enjoy the rest of the video.